The Wolf here, thewolfspeaks.com. I wanted to come to you today for one specific topic, and I think it's a topic that's going to touch all of us because I know it's affected my life tremendously, and that topic is money. Wouldn't you agree money's pretty important? Now, I say it's important. I'm not going to say it's everything. As we've heard all the terms, you know, money isn't everything, blah, blah, blah. But you know what? Having money and not having money, having money is a whole lot better. And I'm not saying that we need it because we got to do all these things and buy all this stuff. But there's a certain level of money that we need just to take care of our basic world, right? You know, rent, mortgage, food, shelter, transportation. We have to cover these things. The thing I've learned about money with my time here on the planet is that money is a tool. It's a tool to be used to your benefit for benefiting your family, yourself, and your community. I'm not saying you earn it and hoard it. I'm saying you earn it to make it a benefit to the world around you as well as yourself. So when you talk about money as a tool, there's a, there's a thought that came to mind. This was a few years ago. I started to really think about this and talk to some friends of mine in the banking industry. And I really started to figure out that this banking system is pretty interesting, isn't it? And let's talk about it a minute. So you got the bank. It's a brick building. All this money comes into the bank, and then money goes out of the bank, right? Well, let's look at that structure kind of basically. So I go to work. I earn an income. I deposit my money into that bank. I take that money, and I pay the bills that I need to pay with it. Well, what does the bank do with that money? You're just thinking they're transferring it back and forth, back and forth. Well, the basic system in which it works, we're giving them our money, and then how much are they giving us back? Are they giving us a return, an interest rate? Some cases we might get 0.1 or 2 to 5% if we're lucky on CDs and different money matters and structures. But here's what they do is the banking system is allowed to loan out up to 90% of that money to other people. Now, what are they doing? They're loaning it at 3% interest, 6% interest, 10%, 12%, as high as 26% interest, they're charging people to use our money. And they're benefiting off of that. Now, let me start here in a moment and just say that I'm not bashing the banking system and the financial institutions that we have, but we need to understand how it works, I believe, so that we can work within that system to our benefit, right? And here's an example I'm gonna give you. These days, Credit cards are rampant. You get 15 different offers in your mailbox every week, right? Well, there's a strategy and a place for credit to be used strategically. But here's what I tell you. Is it possible to save $100 a month for 12 months? And I've got $1,200 sitting here. Well, now I can use that $1,200 as my own credit card. What do you think about that? Okay, and if I do want to pay 20% interest, I can pay myself back 20% interest. Now, we have to be disciplined, talked about that in another video, to really structure and pay that money back on a regular basis at the time allowed to where we're giving ourselves the benefit of that money. Now, you're like, Richard, $1,200 isn't anything. I can't buy much with that. Well, that's true. But with patience, time, and persistence, you can build that up over time. Because if you do borrow $500 off of it, pay yourself back at 10 or 20% interest, that number is getting bigger over time. And being disciplined with that, over time you can work on significantly increasing that number to five, ten, twenty thousand. 20,000. What if I drove that car I have a little bit longer, another couple years, and saved the two or $300 a month I'd probably be spending on a car note. Of course, today they're probably seven to 800. But I'd save that two to 300 a month toward buying a car used cash or putting a significant down payment to lower my note, which thus lowers my interest rate that I'm going to pay to the banks, right? So again, money is just a tool. And we have to look at it and decide how do we want to use it and not let it use us. There's a statement a lot of people say is the love of money is the beginning of evil, but it's the love of using the money for your own end gains. Money itself is not evil. It's how do we use it and do we put it as a bigger priority over our family, our health, our, our, you know, disciplines and all of our beliefs in the world, right? How do we structure that? So you have to think about it properly and put the right belief system in place when it comes to money. A couple other quick areas is how do you spend your money? 
I know a lot of people don't like the B word, budget, but how about a spending plan, right? How do I decide, look, I've got $2,000 a month that I want to spend effectively. Where do I want to put that money? I'm all for us having fun and doing what we want, but let's put that inside of our budget to where we're not tempted to go and overspend when I just feel like it and I'm frustrated. I need something to give myself a little bit of relief, right? A little fun with a golf outing, with a little fun to run down to the casino, whatever it is. How about we put that in our spending plan? That once a month we spend 200 bucks and we go and play golf or we go to the casino with our 200 bucks, whatever that is for you. But again, create that spending plan within the realms of what you have to work with. Because inside that spending plan, you know what you can do? You can put that money to save toward a future expense to where you're not paying 20, 30% interest to some credit card company, right? Now, saving money is a whole different strategy, but that should be inside that spending plan. Let me save five or 10%. You know what, Richard, I can't afford that right now. No problem. Here's another strategy coming back to habits we talked about earlier. Save 1%. Well, that's not anything. $2 a month, $20 a month. Listen, every little thing helps and adds up, but you're building that habit of saving some money. Down the road, you're earning a little extra, move it to 5% now. Move it to 6 and 7%. Over time, you're gonna build that up. Very, very simple strategies, but you have to use and have the habits that's really gonna make it work. The last piece on that money piece I'm gonna talk about really is how do I Take that savings that I'm saving and invest it to grow it. Well, we could talk for hours about how to do that, but my thoughts and points to you to make is really simple. Take the time to do your research. Investigate into things that you're passionate about. Some folks love working in real estate. Great strategy, can earn some money there. Buy rental houses, rent them out, cash flow, all that deal. Other people might have some other interests. Maybe they like selling things on the internet. Another way to earn money. People like putting them in stocks, mutual funds, investing in companies. All those are great ideas. Just be careful of two things. One, make sure it's something that you know something about. If I were going to invest money today into a bigger, bigger business, I might go ahead and put some dollars into restaurants. Why? Because I worked in that restaurant industry for 20 years. So I understand the workings and how it works. And if people are showing me how they can get a good return, I can say, well, that looks a little bit much. Show me the details. So I have some inner working knowledge of that business. And then the other thing is really simply, is it something I kind of have a little bit of a passion about? Because if it's something you're just throwing your money at, you're more than likely not going to pay as much attention to it. So you're most, most more likely to lose that money. So put it where you know where it's going to be and then also diversify. Have your monies in a little different areas, maybe some in savings. We always want a good emergency fund there in case something happens where we've got to pay the bills for a few months or out of work or decide to change careers, whatever that might be. But spread it out, mutual funds, stock market, some in real estate, some in international stocks, whatever that mix for you is. That's where you're going to talk with a financial planner to get some more, some more direction on that. But the whole idea is diversify and pick something you know something about to really put your money and have it grow, have it advance, and then you can live the life of your dreams at some point in the future in your retirement. So those are my money tips for you today. Again, the wolf, thewolfspeaks.com.